place called Ramabanta, Ramabanta Trading Post, camping site we're going to stay. This is our staging post. Good place to stop and check out the surroundings because if you look up there, that tortuous climb is the beginning of Baboon's Pass. And I'm told that's the easy bit. I've got the day to spend doing what I like. We tackle Baboon's Pass tomorrow. So I'm off to see one of Southern Africa's greatest but least visited waterfalls. This is the Matetsonyani waterfall, the highest single drop waterfall in all of Southern Africa. Actually, it's pronounced Maletsonyani. It's 630 feet, that's 192 meters high. This wonderful canyon reminds me about something that I've been told about Baboon's Pass. You see, I don't like heights, not even a little bit. I don't even like ladders. On Baboon's Pass there is a rock called Goliath. Apparently, with your left wheel one inch from Goliath, means that your right wheel will be one inch from a 500 foot vertical drop. I can't wait. So now, tomorrow is the big day. We've spent the day around Simon Kong, seen the falls, uh, enjoyed a little bit of the local colour. Tomorrow we hit Baboon's Pass. I suppose mine yeah. probably fit in there with a the, with the piece. So the big question is, what pressure to pump my tyres? Now the vehicles travelling with me will be running their huge tyres, probably at half a bar. Now because I have low profile tyres, I just can't do that. If I did, my tyres would be destroyed in the first 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is the exact opposite. I'm going to make them very hard. Three bar in fact. I want to protect them. I don't want my trip to be stopped by damaged tyres. Right now we're off. This is a uh, former introduction, my good friend Julian Snayman, who's been with me on several trips and uh, we've uh, had a lot of interesting trips together. Normally, off-road you like, you, in almost every situation you let tyre pressures down because that gives you extra footprint, broader footprint, better grip and also absorbs the impact. But in this particular case, because of the low profile tyres, I've only got this much profile on the sidewall of the tyre. Now if I soften them it's going to do that. And now I've got very little left. And the problem with that over very very rocky lumpy terrain is that tyres doing this You've got this big bulge, and if you you scrape it with a rock, you suddenly destroy the tyre. Because I want to protect the tyre. But now, because I will have reduced traction, I'm relying on this vehicle's traction control. is going to have to do a lot more work, because I'm not going to have the grip. So, I don't know if I've made the right decision, but, you know, and like all of these things, you give it a try and see what happens. Good luck, mate. Yeah, you too, mate. Yep. My it's Land Rover be... be victorious. No, I'm not, I don't care about the car, I care about me. <laughs> what did Alan Shepard say when he was in the, in the first American orbit of Earth? I like the <laughs> Please, Lord, don't let me mess up. Or something like that. The actual trail itself, Boone's Pass, actually starts here. But the alternative is to actually go along the river and up a bank there, which just plain is more interesting. I'm kind of letting, letting them decide. They know the area and I don't. Uh, it's the question is, can we all get through? That's the question. It doesn't take us long and we're high over the valley. It looks like somebody has gone in front of us and improved the road. It's like a highway compared to what I expected. The Boone's Pass is actually a donkey and cattle pass, not a vehicular pass. And evidence of that is now blocking our way. 
not too many places where this is a bit of a bit of it's easy to see that dogs are an integral part of the lives of the herders. One thing that the pass is doing, and that's climbing. Uh, up to now, it's, apart from the river, it's been quite easy. But now I think it gets more difficult because up to this point, the local village down there, they kind of want to encourage people to come here. And this is where Baboon's Pass proper starts. But again, this is the easy part. This is the part that earlier, in fact, yesterday when we arrived uh, at Roma Banta, the lodge we stayed at is just down there. You can actually see it down there. Okay, that's fine. So the campsite on this kind of road is one hour, two hours, four hours? The campsite is on this road. If it's good like this, it'll be another 14 k's. Then we've got six k's of terrible, terrible, terrible to the campsite. And that'll take four to five hours. Ashley Thorne, our guide, has lived in the area for most of his life. So I reckon I should probably take him seriously. But we need to keep pushing because the challenge is up front. And he wasn't wrong. Just watching this defender and I'm thinking, what on earth did I get myself into? Up a little right if you can. If you can. That's good, that's good. Perfect. Keep going. Well, I suppose this is what I came here for. The first. Yeah, these would be All perfect. Right. Rock core. You've got to do this. Every time you turn off, you've got to make sure that all these devices are engaged. The front wheel must come over that big rock. I'm just going to have a couple of clearance issues here. Substantial ones. And you keep the front wheel. Well, the point is that uh, more there. if we go down, we have no choice but to continue. Oh, absolutely. There's only one way out. So there's only one way. There is no option not to complete the trail. Once on it, there is nowhere to turn around, so no turning back. Come up to the top and stop there. Stop. The whole, the whole vehicle feels like it's, it's, it's a tenuous grip because I'm sure only a few wheels are actually on the ground. Phase one complete. <laughs> Another 15 phases to go. <laughs> and that's just this obstacle. <laughs> but I am getting used to the vehicle. It's really doing very well. You know what's amazing about this car? The traction control is its not just good, it is brilliant. In a situation like this, it stops you rolling back. I'm not rolling back if I make a mistake or lose traction or something. I'm not rolling back. We're going to bring it along here, huh? Hold on. Uh, we're going to get it over there, over the boulder. We need it for maybe a study here. And it's making it so much easier. 
really is I'm just blown away by this this traction control in this car. That said, I've only done a kilometre or so of the rough stuff and I've already dinged the car. First, first bit of road rash on the... Oh, that's quite bad. That's quite bad, that is. We missed out the rock of it. Slid no, off it. No, what, no, we slid off it. We, we were, were on it, it and, it actually, and it actually slid off. Uh, it's the first bit of really difficult stuff and I've now already put a bit of a ding in the car. So, anyway. Time for a quick lunch stop. Oh, maybe that's not such a good idea after all. Now we decided to cut lunch a little bit short because it's going to rain. One thing I was worrying about more than anything else was a wet track to just add to the problems. It's going to rain. We have to get to the campsite before dark. Driving this in the wet will be bad enough, but if it's dark, it'll be downright dangerous. And then, more bad news. There's a big rock in the middle of the road. Yes. And we're going to have to get it out of the road before we can move it. But that rock is like a ton's worth of rock. <laughs> there are three vehicles in our convoy. Ouch. Only one has a winch. We get it aside, or we don't go on. And the only thing that has a chance of moving okay. that rock is a winch, and a big one. Luckily for us, it's in Mike's lead defender. If it had been on one of the other vehicles, I don't know what we would have done. 